God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yeah, we're going to have opportunity after the word of God to pray for people. I have a sense as well that some of the prayer needs to be for internal battles, which are the biggest battles of all, aren't they? Where, you know, we suffer with all sorts of of things that we feel that we've just got to live with for the rest of our lives. I'm working through the Psalms, as you know. Last week, we looked at Psalm 23. Today, we're going to look at Psalm 19. So if you have your Bible, who's got their Bible this morning? Yay. Not many. (laughs) Will you turn with me to Psalm 19? I'm encouraging you to bring a Bible into the service with you. If you can't bring one from home, we've got a stack out there. Bring your Bible in because we're going to read this um, amazing psalm. It's an amazing psalm. A psalm of David, Psalm 19. I'm going to read the whole of it, but we're just going to look at the uh, verse 7 to the end together. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. And this is the bit we're going to look at today. The law of the Lord is perfect refreshing the soul. Who needs their soul refreshed today? I do. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Who wants to be wise with the wisdom of God today? I do. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Who needs some more joy today? I do. Amen. Where am I? Um, The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees, decrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold. Someone's rubbed a gold ring on my eye this morning because I've got a stye on it. But they're more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey than honey from the honeycomb. By them, your servant is warned in keeping them. There is great reward. Did you know that? Great reward in keeping the word of God. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Is he your rock this morning? Is he your redeemer? Can you depend on him? Do you know that you can lean on him and he will not fail? It's true. Psalm 19 has two main themes. Of course, the first part of it talks about the splendor of God's creation. And then the second part, which we're going to look into in detail, a little bit of detail this morning, speaks of the sufficiency, the relevant, the completeness of God's word. We're living in in days when God's word is being challenged and changed by all sorts of people, including many Christian churches and many theologians who think it's something to be played with and, and altered and adapted to the culture we live in. But I want to tell you this morning, that's not how God sees things. God's word never changes. And we're going to look at how wonderful it is this morning from Psalm 19. The word of God is true. It is God breathed. Some of us here this morning might be relatively new to church. I want to tell you that God's word is true. 
It is breathed by God himself. It's actually a smaller version of Psalm 119. I've said to you before, when my sister and I, when we were little, shared a bedroom at night time, if we wanted to get to sleep quick, we'd read Psalm 117, which is that, that big. And, um, but Psalm 119 is the biggest chapter in the whole of the Bible. And Psalm 19 is, is a little pricey of it, really. Um, both Psalms, though, reflect the power of God's word. The word of scripture is the revelation of the Lord God himself. When you read your Bible and you're asking God to open your heart and speak to you, you're not reading it clinically like it's a, a novel or a book just to be studied, but you're reading it as the living, powerful word of God then you're reading about the living, powerful God who inspired it and breathed it into existence. We need to be reading our Bibles, folks. Verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. It is flawless. It is complete. We don't need to add to it or take away from it. It's our handbook for living. This perfect word will in, enable us to live in the way God designed us to live. He made us, didn't he, before in our mother's womb, before we were even born. He, he'd written all our days in his book before one of them came to be. God made you and he said, you are wonderful. He made you because all that he does is good, isn't it? He knows us. His word is the perfect plan for our lives. Do you want to know what God's plan is for you? Well, he's going to reveal it to you and speak into your life as you read his word. He restores our souls. Do you need your soul restoring this morning? Some of you do. Really, all of us do, don't we? We need God's restoration to just empower us to live for him you know you can go to a health spa you can do whatever you like but there's this word will restore your soul the word soul in hebrew is the word nefesh and it refers to the inner person when you read the old testament this word is used many times sometimes it's translated in English as mind or person or soul. But it actually always refers to the inner person. It always means the eternal person that never dies. The real you. The word restore means to transform, to totally transform. He can transform your inner person. Did you know that? That's what this word has the power to do. Through the working of the Holy Spirit, you can be transformed in your inner person. We spend too much time in this country. And I'm not denying folks, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying we don't need to go to the doctors. And sometimes there, aren't, there are clinical reasons why our brains are messed up. Of course, that is true. But we can never say that God cannot restore us. And God cannot touch us and make us new. And this morning, some of you have been living under the cloud of thinking you'll never be any different. You were born depressed. I want to tell you today, God can restore your inner being and make you whole. And we're going to pray for you this morning because we believe God can make you whole. Sometimes, you know, he will do it in an instant and sometimes he will start a work in us that will just grow and mature as we sit in his word and we let it dwell in us richly. God is in the business of restoring our souls. God's word is able to transform the whole inner person through the power of the Holy Spirit. Do we believe that today? Yes. If he's king of kings... And Lord of Lords, then he can do anything and nothing is too hard for him. 
And we need sometimes, folks, to stop talking like nothing will ever change because we were born that way. So important. We need the inner transformation of God through his word. And although we have physical battles, and no doubt some of you have physical battles here today, it's the internal ones that are the biggest burden. Do you agree with me? When your head's messed up, when you can't stop worrying, they're vile burdens to carry, aren't they? And God wants to touch us this morning. People who have everything in this world are often the most unhappy because of the internal battles that rage within them. Suicide rates are on the increase. I'm sure you know that. A total of 6,507 suicides were registered by the coroners in the UK in 2019. It was up by 11% from the previous year. Because money doesn't buy you peace and joy and wholeness. We need a change in our inner being. Now, of course, this starts with salvation. And then it continues with a walk with God. And it's by his word, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that that life that he's put within us grows and develops and we become more like Jesus. So at this point, I have to share the gospel with you. Jesus died because he loved you. He's known you since you were born and he wants to walk with you. And if you don't know him as your personal saviour, then that's where it begins. You have to ask him into your life today. You have to say a kind of prayer like this. It's not clinical. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross, for taking my burdens, on my sins on your shoulder. I just come to you today. Would you come and save me, God, from myself? Come and live in my life. Come and be my saviour. Come and be my Lord. And he'll do that for you today. And that's where it begins. And if you haven't done that, will you pray that prayer today? Speak to one of us. Do it right now. And we will pray with you again at the end of the service. We need a change in our inner being. Hebrews 4.12 says this. For the word of God is alive and active. You see, we believe it. If we really believed it, we'd watch it more than we watch some of the television stuff we watch, which actually we shouldn't be watching because Jesus wouldn't watch it. The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. God's word is great news for us, isn't it? God's word can set us free. It's perfect and sufficient so that we can be all God has called us to be. We do that by reading it, by drawing near to God. Not just giving it a quick, you know, nod and a wink, you know what I mean? Oh, I've read a verse today, that'll do. Most of us have been there. It's by saying, God, I just want to sit with your word today. And I want it to flood into me and change me. One thing is for sure, the devil doesn't want me and you to read the Bible. Why do you think that is? Because the devil knows that the word of God transforms us. And he doesn't want us to read it. Today, I want to challenge you. Is it all right if I create a challenge for you today? I create it for myself as well. We need to get more into the word of God. Not boasting about it, not saying, oh, I've read three chapters today. Not even telling anybody, just being with Jesus and saying, God, this is the living word. It has power to restore my soul, to change everything that's broken in me. So, God, I'm going to give it a bit more honor. And I'm challenging you to do the same. And then the psalm goes on to say, The statutes of the Lord, 
They are trustworthy. <clears throat> you can trust God's word. It makes the simple people wise. Some people say these days, um, almost like a badge of honour, well, I'm open-minded. That's the society we live in, isn't it? I'm open-minded. Actually, um, we don't, Christians don't need to be open-minded. They need to be leaning on God and his word. God's word makes us wise. A Christian needs to know what to keep in and what to keep out. You don't need to be open-minded. You need to be God-minded. The word of God teaches us how to discern what is right and what is wrong. It makes us wise. You don't need to be open-minded about some of the ways of the world, folks, that people are being taught now in the world. We need to be dependent upon God's word. It doesn't change. It makes us wise. Verse 8 says, The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. God's word sets down truths to be believed. They don't change. God the Holy Spirit sanctifies us as we receive and act on God's word. It sets us on the right path. Psalm 119, I've already mentioned it. One of the lovely verses there. Amy Grant wrote a song about it, didn't she? Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light for my path. If you don't know what to do, then read God's word. Psalm 25 says, he guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Proverbs 3, you know this one too. Remember, Dave Pope wrote it in my Bible. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. The word of God teaches us and empowers us to live the way God wants us to live. I want to just read you a few verses from Colossians 3 this morning. It talks about some of God's ways. And the reason I'm reading it is, first of all, because it's God's word. But secondly, because so often in in our generation, we don't read these parts in church very often because we consider them negative. They're not negative. They're God's advice, commands for us to live. So Colossians 3 and verse 5 says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to the earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of such things. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. And it goes on. And then um, later on in that passage, he says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. You know, Scripture is there for us to take in because God's teach, God's got, it's all there. The way we need to live. By the power of the Holy Spirit. It's all there in his word. And then at the end of that passage, it says, Let the message of Christ dwell richly in you as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdoms through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The commands of the Lord are radiant, <clears throat> Psalm 19 says. In fact, Jesus, when he talked about simplicity and wisdom and us being wise in his simplicity, he actually said, didn't he, in Matthew 18, Jesus invited a little child to stand among them. Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this little child is the greatest 
in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 9 says this, The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. It's good to fear the Lord. It's not, you know, it's not that kind of, I'm scared to death of you kind of fear. It's that honor and reverence that God is to be worshipped. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such as these to worship him. God is spirit and his worshippers must, must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the Bible teaches us how to worship God. It's far bigger than just singing. You know that, don't you? It's far bigger than just coming on a Sunday and having a good old sing. You can sing your heart out in church and leave through that door and do exactly what you want and grieve the Holy Spirit. You know that worship is our whole lifestyle. And the word of God teaches us, instructs us how to live, empowers us to worship with the whole of our lives. Jesus said in Matthew 24, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. And that is a testimony to its purity. It's untouched by sin. Isn't that a nice phrase? This word is untouched by sin. Don't you want to read it? Psalm 19 reminds us the decrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. When God judges, it's always right. Now, we all want to be happy, don't we? I was um, lying in bed last night and having a chat with the Lord out loud and just going through some of... I'm, I'm forgiven, folks, you know, so are you. When you've confessed your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you from all unrighteousness. But I was just thinking about some of the wrong judgments I've made through the years, you know. And, oh, Lord. It's been tough, Lord. I don't always make the right judgments, and neither do you, do you? But God's judgments are always right. That's why we need his word to direct us. We think we know so much, but actually we know so little. So I just want to read you the last few verses. And then we're going to come around the communion table and we're going to pray for one another. And we're going to see God set three free through the power of his word. People who are bound very often by things that they have allowed to control them for many years and they just don't know what to do. Verse 10 says, They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey from the honeycomb. By them is your servant warned. See, the word of God warns us. In keeping of them, there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. So the word of God will keep you from sin. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is the word of God that will keep us close to Jesus and keep us from sin and direct our paths and protect us. The devil doesn't want you to read it. He wants you to be much too busy with everything else. I just want to finish by reading Joshua chapter 1, a few verses from there. God said to Joshua when he became the leader of the Israelites into the promised land, be strong. And very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. Do not turn from it, folks. 
to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Listen to that. You follow this word and God says, I will make you successful. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What a wonderful word we have. When we concentrate on it, when we give ourselves to it, God is going to lead us, direct us, protect us, heal us, forgive us, make us prosperous. Do you believe his word this morning? With me, will you dedicate more of your time to this wonderful word? Lord, would you help us? We thank you for your word, Lord. What a wonderful thing that you gave us your word. It is complete. It is enough. It restores our souls. Lord, we thank you for your word. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you would make us more like him and that you would do in our lives everything you want to do that we might bring you glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.